the Rajan Muti, Mr. Justice Kadi, the High Commissioner for India and Your Excellencies, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. Narayanan Muthi is an outstanding man. Indian entrepreneurs, as a rule, require good connections in both the bureaucracy and the political leadership. They can then navigate their business through India's complex system of licenses and regulations. Narayanan Muthi is an exceptional Indian entrepreneur. When he formed Infosys, he created and revolutionized the IT industry, an unregulated new sector of the economy. He used no connections with the bureaucracy or political leaders either in Delhi or the state of Kanakata, where Infosys is sited in, at Bangalore. When I visit, visited Infosys in Bangalore on 19th of November 19, 2005, I was pleasantly surprised to view several hectares of a green oasis with fountains, elegant buildings well laid out, an auditorium, air conditioning that works silently, restaurants, and electrical, electric buggies. I could imagine myself being in California. He has created the most remarkable campus in India. His mind is open, as you have heard him just now, and is always receptive to new ideas. And he gives direct answers to direct questions. His book is a collection of his speeches over the years, and he has emphasized the need for India to move forward faster beyond the culture of mistaking articulation for accomplishment. And he walks his talk. Infosys employs 100,000 professionals in 22 countries and has developments in China, Australia, UK, Canada, and Japan. It is the first Indian company, as he said, to be listed on NASDAQ. And this will help speed the modernization of India as more Indian companies list on the New York Stock Exchange. Prime Minister Manmohan Singh has said recently that entrepreneurs need to rise above personal gains and profits, to think about their larger role in the country and the world at large. Narayanan Muthi is such an entrepreneur. Everybody, and definitely every Indian, knows Narayanan Muthi is not a poor man. However, he leads a simple life, is humble, and does not party nor watch TV. Very difficult not to do it. He has a three-bedroom house and owns a 1.5-liter Opel Astra. I asked him in 1995 whether he would consider entering politics. I said India needed political leaders like him to raise the standards of governance <clears throat> and to stay engaged with the world, and especially its region. He shook his head and said he had no political ambitions. As an entrepreneur, he has created a whole IT sector that has generated wealth for Indians and, employed, and employment for two to three million Indian professionals. If all Indian ministers and top bureaucrats were like him, hard-working, tough taskmasters, hard negotiators, but always forward-looking, India will be the fastest growing country in the world. And in one generation, it will become a first world country. However, Mr. Muti knows, probably realizes, that no single person can change India's system of governance to become as efficient as Infosys. Before I commend this book to all young people, let me add a few words to what he has said about India. 
There are limitations in the Indian constitutional system and the Indian political system that prevents it from going at high speed. I did not realize it until we engaged India closely after Manmohan Singh and Mr. Chidambaram came here in 1991 and they decided they, they were then both finance minister and commerce minister under the Rao government and they wanted us to give our experience of the market economy. Since then, we have realized that whatever the political leadership may want to do, it must go through a very complex system at the center and an even more complex system in the various states. There are constitutional limits as to what the center can do in the states and the amount of work that is on the shoulders of these ministers makes it necessary for each man, each minister to be like Mr. Muthi. <laughs> but Mr. Muthi is a rare individual. So Indians will go at a tempo which is decided by their constitution, by their ethnic mix, by their voting patterns, and the resulting coalition governments which makes for very difficult decision making. He has articulated his views of how India can grow very clearly and crisply. I commend this book to all young people who want to understand what makes for success in business and at the same time benefits those in the country and the world at large. His book contains gems of how his ideas and his philosophy of, of life has enabled Infosys to succeed. I have not read the whole book, but I flipped through various parts of his book and they are gems of wisdom put out simply and honestly. I commend the book to you all. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for inspiring us. Each of us here has had a very special experience listening to you. Thank you very much. May I request the audience to rise as the minister mentor leaves this gathering. <laughs>